Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. It's time for another mystery box challenge. So if you don't know what these are, Corgi over at Creative on the Cheap, she hosts these. She assigns us different DIY YouTubers, a different DIY YouTuber, and we have to put together a box of mystery items, ship it to them, and they have to use the items that are in the box to create with. So this month's mystery box challenge, the terms were, it has to be between 15 and $20. It can be any supplies from anywhere. It doesn't just have to be Dollar Tree. But the catch this time is we have to somehow incorporate a popsicle stick. So right off the bat, we already have a pretty big challenge ahead of us before we even look inside this box. So my box today is from Yami, the Latina next door, and my box that I put together went over to Natalie at Designed to the Nines. So what I'll actually do is I will put a playlist down in the description box where you can head to see the next video in line and it'll continue down so you're gonna see everybody's mystery box, what they got, and how they used it to create with. So these challenges are really exciting. I love them, that's why I continue to do them. However, they're also kind of scary because you absolutely have no idea what's in here. I have not opened this box. I do not know what's in here. You guys are gonna see, you're gonna see it as I see it. So, first of all, <laughs> um, challenge item number one, don't hate me. Oh no, and it's already falling out the bottom, but this is supposed to be a secret, so we're gonna keep this till the end. I also want to mention that we have to use the challenge items. We're supposed to use as many of the items in these boxes as we can, but we have to use the challenge items. So I'm assuming, yes, this one is challenge item number two. We'll save those to the end. And there's a card. All right, so here is her message to me. It says everything in here is from Dollar Tree since you do so great with those. I can handle Dollar Tree. I know you will knock this out of the park. Can't wait to see what you come up with. P.S. I had to take challenge item number one apart just so it would fit in the box. Yummy. Okay, well we're gonna find out what that item is in a little bit. All right, so everything's just exposed. We're gonna go through here. The cool thing is, is um, uh, Yami does not live anywhere near me, so her Dollar Trees probably carry something totally different than mine, so it's always cool to see. <gasps> Oh, I just saw these on Instagram. Um, but my Dollar Tree does not have these. It is a wall shelf with the ropes on it already. Yay, I'm excited about this one. Ooh, also, this is a terrarium planter. I love these. Wreath forms, these are cute. These are the mini sized ones. We have different ribbon. Oh, these, that's cute. It's lemon ribbon. I've never seen that before. And we have springy colors. We have green and pink burlap ribbon. Oh, I've never seen these before either. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. She must think I have got a great idea that I can use a lot of these for. They're like dot stickers, adhesive dots. We have one of their wall shelves. <gasps> I haven't seen these either in my Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has some really great wooden craft supplies, but I have not seen these. It is kind of like a cup. I guess you put pins or something in it. Wooden though, so I love working with wood because it's so versatile. Oh, this is cute. I haven't seen these either. Okay, so apparently her, her Dollar Tree is way better than mine because I don't see any of this cute stuff in mine ever. And we have a bigger one too, and they don't have any of this either. So this one says family. It's a cute little round wood sign. Oh my gosh, there's so much in here. Okay, stop it. I'm coming to visit you, Yami, because I need to go to your Dollar Tree. This is Crafter Square air dry clay at Dollar Tree. Stop it right now. This is cool. We have, oh, this is cute. Live what you love. Do I have to DIY this? Because I feel like this is super cute and perfect just the way it is. It's got like a tropical greenery background that is perfect for the summer coming up. Do I really have to destroy this? <laughs> maybe I'll put it on the shelf. Maybe, maybe I just, there's my DIY. Right there, ta-da! Oh, these, I have bought a couple of these because I've had some ideas for them, so 
Definitely gonna be DIYing one in this video. Oh cool, these are chalkboard stickers. Gosh, she said so many good things. Love those. And last but not least, a, another square frame, but this one has uh, baking supplies in the shape of a cupcake. Adorable. And now for the challenge items. Definitely nervous about this. We're gonna do challenge item number two because the other one says don't hate me, so I'm a little afraid of that one. Um, so let's open this up and see. Challenge item number two. Paper pack? That's awesome. I don't think he's either a Dollar Tree. There's all kinds of good stuff in here and I love the colors. Okay, yeah, we're gonna get creative with this. That's not too challenging. It is, but it's not. And now for this one. I wonder what this is. What is that? <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this. Okay, so the flower garden stake. It says pinwheel. It's a pinwheel. It's a flower garden pinwheel and it also either I didn't put it together right oh there we go there and it spins what what on earth am I gonna do with this <laughs> all right so what would you guys do with this what would you turn this into leave me your ideas down in the comment section below before you watch the rest of this video to see how I update or repurpose this all right, so I am gonna take a couple days to try to figure out what I'm gonna do with all these items. There's a lot of good things. This thing though, still don't know. Um, so next time I see you, I will come back and we will get creative together. All right, so I definitely felt like I got some good things, but I also feel like I struggled. So you guys are gonna have to let me know how I do at the end of this video, because I think some of these projects are going to shock you. <laughs> so just wait and see. We're gonna tackle this sign, and I was so excited to work with this air dry clay. So we, we're starting with that first. Plus it has to dry for 24 hours. So I did this project first so it could sit overnight. And then I had to come back and work on it more the next day. But basically I just rolled out the clay and I wanted to put it in the bottom of this sign so I could kind of make a tray out of it and make like faux tiles using the clay. So once I had the clay smoothed down into the middle of this sign, I took some of my uh, clay tools that I had on hand and I a ruler and kind of scored out where tile like the tiles would have butted up against each other now you'll see once this stuff dries what it actually did and what happened to it it's kind of shocked me the next day i don't know if you guys have worked with this before if you have tips for me um but the next day when i came back it was all crumbling and um, broken apart which is fine because I am a problem solver and I didn't want to just throw this project out so I found my spackle from Dollar Tree filled up those gaps and continued on Now I do admit I was going to use this as my excuse of incorporating a popsicle stick into this challenge, but you'll see later on, I found another purpose for them, but I did use a popsicle stick to just work that spackling into the cracks, let it dry, and then came back in with a sanding block, which you can also find at Dollar Tree, sanded it all down smooth, and then I had some uh, leftover stickers, tile stickers from the Target Dollar Spot from another project. I'll link that video up in the iCards if you want to go back and check that out. Um, so I used that, but I wanted to have a white layer underneath it. So I came in with my white chalk paint and made sure to cover the entire surface. It also kind of helped blend out that spackling that I had to use. I really wanted that terracotta look, but Sometimes you just have to go roll with the project, right? So here's a look at those tiles that I found at Target or the sticker tiles that I found at Target. Um, and I just used those to go over top of the makeshift tiles and cut them down to size using a really sharp X-Acto knife.
And I still wanted that terracotta look, so I grabbed out these mini clay pots from Dollar Tree some of their moss and also some of their battery powered tea lights and in the bottom of those pots i added some tissue paper to kind of take up the space instead of just using all moss and then put the moss on top and the candles on top of that and made myself a cute little candle holder And you're also gonna be seeing some color when it comes to this DIY video. And I had used these oil inks for some ornaments over Christmas time. I found these on Amazon and I'll link them down below. They're super fun to work with. And all you have to do is actually just drop some of it inside of something like an ornament or like I'm showing you here, this clear plastic terrarium from Dollar Tree and using some canned air, which you can also find at Dollar Tree sometimes. This one I think was from Walmart, this can. Um, but if you don't wanna purchase anything, you can also just use a straw and blow your uh, ink around. I do suggest just doing one color at a time versus like putting a bunch of colors in there at one time because it kind of mixes weird. Um, but if that's your creativeness and you wanna do all colors at the same time, you totally can. I just kind of liked this layering look, going one color and then blowing the ink around and it gives it a really pretty translucent layered look. Then you could put a candle in here or flowers in here or whatever you like in here. I'm putting some Dollar Tree white rocks in there to keep going with the terrarium type theme and purpose of this and also had a succulent from Dollar Tree just popped in there too. Super quick and easy and you know, something you can just add a pop of color into your decor and have fun doing it. This would be super cute in a craft room too. Now we're gonna be working with this wall shelf. I have my handsaw and miter box out and I'll link this down below too. You can find these really inexpensively on Amazon. Definitely something I have to have in my craft stash. Basically, I just cut the strings apart. They have a ring at the top and I needed to separate those. So I just took the ring off, kept it, didn't use it for anything, but I will eventually. Uh, and then I measured the board, marked the middle and then cut this board right in half. Then I just tied a knot in the top of the string and cut off the excess. I also incorporated the chalkboard stickers that were in my box. And you can write, you know, if you do a garden, you can write whatever type of flower or thing that you're growing on the chalkboard sticker or you could write home or garden on it, get creative. I'm also going to be adding a cup hook to the front of these. So I measured out to find the middle and then hand screwed those cup hooks into the fronts of the boards. And then I'm using some Dollar Tree mason jar lids that have the chains on them. And the chains kind of hung a little bit too low for me. So I just tied a knot in the top, but you could also make your own kind of hanger and make one shorter or even cut these down. When I saw this round sign and all the polka dots, I knew I was gonna make some kind of mirror centerpiece thing. So I turned the sign upside down, got the sticker off. This one was crazy. It actually had a sticker under the sticker. Um, so I got those off, took the hanger off of the back and started adding those polka dot stickers all the way around the rim. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time to spray paint. I have this Wagner painting tint that I got from Amazon. I'll link down below too. I love using this. And my original idea was to use this teal color. I love this teal color right now, but my spray paint can decided to not want to cooperate. So I moved on to a uh, purple lavender color that I had because I still really wanted a bright color, but unfortunately that paint did not really want to work either. So it just didn't give me very good coverage. So here you can see me trying my hand at that lavender and you can see it's just, it's covering the stickers, but it just did not really cover the MDF of the sign. So I let this dry. I coated it with a coat of clear coat to seal it. And then I found a new spraying nozzle off of a different can of spray paint and swapped it out so I could still use this teal color that I was really, really hoping to use and that worked perfect. So you can see it has much better coverage now. It didn't want to do the side so good. So that prompted me to do the next step in using some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope around the edges. So I just used my hot glue, went all the way around the edge with that rope, and then I hot glued on my mirror to the center, decided I was gonna add some rope to the center too and kind of cover up the mirror edge. And then once all the glue was dry and I was happy with the look, I took this in and I put it in the center of my table and put my flowers on it to make sort of a cute pedestal, not really pedestal, but centerpiece. Um, and this could also, you could put your little hook back on the back and use it as a mirror or decorative piece that you could use on the wall too. And yes, now it is time to work on this flower pinwheel. And all I could see when I looked at it was raindrops. So we're gonna make a rainbow colorful cloud. Why not? So what I did is I took this flower apart. The petals all had like a wire shaping to them. So I just bent the, the points down so they weren't pokey. And then I glued each one onto a piece of colorful felt. After I had all of my raindrops cut out, I took a piece of gray felt and cut that into a cloud shape. And then I just arranged my raindrops in a random order and different heights and used some Dollar Tree white yarn to hot glue them, hot glue the string to the raindrops and then up onto the back of the cloud. So I think this turned out so, so cute. If you agree, leave me a rainbow emoji down in the comment section below, or just tell me how much you love this colorful rainbow. That was the best I could come up with. If you guys have better ideas, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. My other challenge item was that pack of scrap paper and I love paper crafting. So I decided to keep this one simple and do something that was mainly focused around the paper. So we're gonna make some pinwheels. I'm starting by cutting my paper into a perfect square shape, taking a ruler and drawing an X on the back, going diagonally from opposite corner to opposite corner, and then cutting with my scissors halfway down each one of those pencil marks. What you're gonna do also is kind of pop a hole in the middle with your pencil so you know on the front side where the center is. You could also use a brad for this. I'm using hot glue. And you're gonna bend in every other one of your points to create this pinwheel shape. the bottom I'm going to use that wooden pencil holder that was in my box. I grabbed out some greenery from Dollar Tree and some buttons that I had from Dollar Tree too. 
And this is where the popsicle stick comes in handy. It's going to be the bottom of our pinwheel. So I did actually incorporate a popsicle stick or a few of them actually into this video. I added the button to the middle of the pinwheel and then glued the pinwheel onto the popsicle stick. And the base, the wooden pencil holder is going to be our pinwheel holder. So I have lots of pops of yellow in the she shed. So I decided to paint the bottom of this um, yellow too. It also matches the center of the pinwheels with the yellow buttons. Once that was dry, then I added that um, greenery to the inside. And I also created several more of the pinwheels um, in the different colors so that I could kind of fill that little pencil holder up. This was definitely by far the most challenging of all of the mystery box challenges I've participated in so far. So please give this video a thumbs up for me, at least for effort anyway. And let me know down in the comments, which one of these projects was your favorite and that you would like to try out. I'll also have a link to the playlist of this mystery box challenge down in the description box below. So make sure to click that so you can move on to the next person in this challenge, see what I sent them and see what they created. Also, I would love to have you subscribe if you are new here and I want to thank you so so much for joining me. I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone